Hey there YouTube, welcome to the channel. My name is Alex Hubbard. I am a senior systems administrator with over 15 years of experience in the IT field. Welcome to 5 Minute Fridays on my channel where we pick a single topic and we discuss it for roughly 5 minutes. Today's topic is why should you do security in layers? Think of security as an onion. You have multiple layers that you need to peel back before you can get to that centerpiece which is your network. Let's look at it this way. You have Fred in finance. Fred's a real great guy, right? But he's a click happy guy. Guy clicks on literally everything that comes in. Uh, crappy links, attachments, clicks on everything, you name it. Um, one day Fred happens to get an email that says he needs to update uh, the bank's credentials for, could be the company's bank or his own bank, doesn't, doesn't really matter. How do you protect Fred from himself and how do you protect your company? There is no single application that's going to protect you, you know, at, at this stage of the game. Email security and security in general is just, it's pretty advanced. Your first layer or first line of attack, and this is the most important part of your security stack, is to educate your users. Your users are your weakest link. You cannot patch humans. You need to make sure someone like Fred is educated consistently so he is aware the bank's not going to email him telling him to update his credentials or you know anything of that matter security awareness training absolute layer one first part most important part of your security stack then you need to look at okay fred did get this email so how do we stop these from coming in how did it come in you're never going to stop 100 percent of this stuff and this is why we are talking about security in layers your traditional spam filter for your email Throw it out, it's not gonna work in today's environment. You need to be implementing systems like Microsoft's ATP, uh, Mimecast or Proofpoint, systems like that. Uh, they employ impersonation and phishing policies uh, along with you know, machine learning and AI that can kinda look at patterns of things that come in and uh, protect you from them coming in. Uh, systems like these will also allow you to, they'll typically have a, like a, a URL scanner or attachment scanner built in as well, and your traditional anti-spam is built into these platforms. Um, they'll look at links and anything that comes in. If they're malicious, you'll typically get an alert and Fred won't be allowed to click on it. Fred might not even get the email, um, and then Fred might complain that he didn't get an email, because um, that happens too. Um, email security is what I call layer two. That's, the, that's what should be your second layer of security in your security stack. And what happens in the rear currents if you have a full security stack and something like that gets through those first two layers, your, your user education and your email filter. Um, this is where your web and DNS filter security application comes into play. Uh, theoretically, if a malicious link gets through your email filter and Fred clicks on it, your next defense should be a good web filter or DNS filter such as iBoss or Cisco Umbrella. Uh, you know, should Fred click on that link, uh, that got through, he should get a nice big warning page that says, hey, don't click on that, when in fact he does click on that because Fred is click happy. Web and DNS filtering is, that's what I would call layer three in our security stack, which brings me to our last layer, endpoint protection. And I kind of split this up into two different parts. Uh, it goes beyond just simple antivirus and anti-malware applications like Kaspersky or Webroot or Malwarebytes or any of those applications. You really should be running uh, a good endpoint protection suite that is capable of machine learning and AI and taking different threat feeds and being able to detect when something is possibly happening on your network. Uh, the days of traditional antivirus, that's a feel good measure, they're gone. You, you know, if you're running something that's just traditional antivirus, don't, don't even bother because it's not, it's not gonna do anything. Um, you should be uh, running something like Carbon Black or CrowdStrike. These are advanced endpoint protection suites. They do a multitude of stuff. And that's the first half of endpoint protection. Uh, endpoint protection doesn't just stop at these applications. You need to have controls in place as well. 
Fred really shouldn't be a local admin on his workstation, no matter how much he begs for it and how much how important he thinks his iTunes and Spotify applications are to install. And he certainly doesn't need to be a domain admin. Um, he should have the least amount of privileges to perform his job. And this isn't because we don't like Fred. You know, Fred's a nice guy. It's to protect the company that Fred works for. Should all your layout layers fail and something get through and you, you, you want it to have the least amount of impact to your organization, that's why we give Fred the least amount of, of privileges to do his job. So if, 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 in fact, his workstation were to get infected, it's going to be kind of contained to his endpoint, and that's... The, that should be the end of it, should something get through. So this has been our 5-Minute Friday, guys. It's probably been a little longer than 5 minutes, but I hope you enjoyed the talking points that we went over today. Um, if you did, please consider subscribing and liking this video. If there's something you want to know about IT or security in general, uh, please leave me a comment and uh, you know, let me know how I'm doing. Stay tuned for more IT-related videos. Thank you for watching.